Hi, you're watching another virtualizedgeek.com training video. This is Keith Townsend. And in today's video, we're going to do actually something pretty simple. We're going to use VMware Fusion to install an ESXi server and then uh, run a nested virtual machine. And the virtual machine that we're going to run nested within the ESXi server will be a VMware uh, vCenter appliance for VMware vSphere 5.1. This can be your basis for a lab running on a MacBook Pro uh, with as little as 8 gig of RAM, which this machine has, uh, for uh, some pretty complex labs. So the first thing we're going to do is actually create a new VM. Go to File, New. Walk through the wizard by uh, choosing Continue Without Disk because we're going to choose an image file. And we're going to uh, find our vSphere 5. Select the correct OS. And memory, we're going to bump up the memory from the default 2 gig. We'll leave it in the same location. Uh, select our memory options. We'll leave it with two uh, processor cores. But we're going to go up to 4 gig of memory. And then we're going to power up our virtual machine. So as you see, once we select the correct disk image, we'll get the standard ESXi installer. And we're going to go with all default installs. We'll pause the video here and fast forward to the end of the installation. There's really nothing special about installing ESXi uh, as a virtual machine versus a physical machine. There's no. So once your vSphere server has been installed, it's time to actually install the nested virtual machine. One of the challenges with uh, this configuration is that getting the appliance onto the actual vSphere server, you still need the vSphere client. And so far, the only way to run the vSphere client is through a Windows machine. So you have a couple of options. We could have uh, uh, went to the network editor and put this machine onto our uh, physical network and connect to the v, the, um, the uh, virtual vSphere server via our um, physical network from a physical Windows 7 machine. Or you can do what I chose to do, which was to actually install a Windows 7 uh, virtual machine and install vSphere on that. So we're going to go ahead and log into the uh, vSphere server using this virtual vSphere client on our MacBook Pro. And there's definitely one consideration to think about when uh, you're running both machines as virtual machines. You want to make sure they're on the same virtual network. So uh, we chose to share the max network with both both our vSphere machine and our Windows 7 machine. So they both have knighted IPs on an internal network to VMware Fusion. Uh, obviously, we were able to successfully connect to uh, the vSphere server. So uh, you know this can get a little confusing. Confusing. So far, we have our physical Mac that we've installed a uh, vSphere uh, virtual machine, and now we've installed a VMware client on a virtual Windows 7 machine running on the same MacBook. So, so far, on the second level kind of virtualization, we have two virtual machines, one Windows 7, one ESXi, We've connected uh, the vCenter client, I'm sorry, vSphere client from the Windows 7 machine to our running uh, ESXi machine. 
Now we're going to go a step further and create a new virtual machine running on the ESXi server. So we're going to import the OVA file for our uh, vSphere appliance. This goes just like we would on any other environment. We're going to deploy from the OVF template. We found the vSphere appliance file. We're going to uh, fan provision. I su suggest fan provisioning everything. Again, we are running on a laptop, so you don't want to go through and thick provision uh, and eat up 34 gig of space when you don't necessarily have to. You may not do this in production, but we will most definitely do this for our lab. We'll power on the machine. As you can see, now we're going through the copying process. We'll pause the video as the vSphere, as the uh, vCenter appliance copies to our ESXi, our virtual ESXi machine. That the install has completed successfully, so we can go ahead and close our wizard, go to the inventory of our ESXi server that we created. Now, again, we're on the Windows 7 virtual machine looking at our ESXi virtual host. Then within our ESXi virtual host, we actually have our vCenter appliance running. If we go to the console, we'll maximize the screen. We'll go to the console of our uh, vSphere appliance. If it hasn't finished booting up, we'll see that it's booting up. Actually, we see that it is booting up. And now we have our vSphere appliance booted up. Now we have a couple of options. We can go to this web page and continue the, the configuration of our uh, vSphere client appliance from our Windows 7 machine, or we can actually go to it from our uh, Max interface. For convenience sake, we'll stay in the window. So we'll go to that HTTPS 172.16.129 dot 139 IP and make sure we go via 5480 port. We'll get of course that the certificate is entrusted because we haven't installed this certificate. Uh, we'll proceed anyway and we have our vSphere appliance uh, setup screen. And voila. We've completed the installation of our vSphere ESXi server running in VMware Fusion with a VM running inside of it. At this point, we can actually shut down our Windows 7 machine and we should be done with it because we can finish the rest of the installation from our uh, Chrome or um, Mozilla or even uh, Safari web browser of the installation of uh, ESXi's uh, infrastructure, including the vSphere uh, vCenter appliance. That's it for the video. Uh, keep track of the lab. We'll use this lab in future um, classes to further understand how we can build out a pretty robust environment, vSphere environment, using a MacBook Pro uh, in this case with Retina Display. Thanks a lot and visit us again at virtualizedgeek.com.